this is Joseph Kokum at TCAF 2015 on behalf of Becca Hilburn's Art Process blog, Keep on Trucking Natto Soup. If you could introduce yourself, Mike. I'm Mike Freiheit. Um, I am a cartoonist, illustrator, and teacher uh, from Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Um, I um, work on a comic book called Monkey Chef, which details my trip and uh, living situation in South Africa at a primate sanctuary where I cook for food, or I mean, sorry, I cook for monkeys, <laughs> and I also cook for humans at night, uh, as well as doing other, like, primate caretaker stuff. Um, Can you show us a few oh, yeah. uh, illustrations from the book? So, yeah, this is the first one. Uh, this one is four different short stories about uh, my time over there. Sure. And the first one is just kind of like a very quick introduction to get people into, um, into the... Where, where I was going really quickly. So it yeah. goes from like New York to South Africa very quickly. And then I'm there. Yeah. And uh, you have two volumes of it out right now. They're both in black and white. Have you been considering moving to color or you really prefer working in the black and white? I spectrum? really, I mean, I love doing stuff in color, but I just love, um, I guess I just love that independent comics quality of black and white and like how sure. much you can do with such a limited range. Um, I mean, I think your pen work is great. I'm not trying to convince you to move to color. I was just no, no, no. I, I totally get it. Because um, it seems like food lends itself a little bit better to color. But right. Some of the some of the, the elements like it'd be cool to have like some things in color and the other things in black and white. But I mean, I, I just yeah. love that aesthetic. I guess that the black and white uh, yeah. lends well, to you, it. You do a great job on it. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, this Are is you when using I'm a, a brush or um, pens to? Ink. This is uh, pretty much all brush. I try to do as much brush as possible because I'm a weirdo. Uh, but <laughs> if I <laughs> if I have to, uh, if it's something like really small and delicate, and it's just like it'd be stupid to use a brush, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna use a pen and not do this to myself. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of the time, it's like I'm very uh, strict with myself about doing like using a brush. I even try to use it with a ruler to get uh, straight lines. Um, wow. Which I've gotten better at, and it's hard. But um, I like I like the uh, organic quality when that happens. Yeah. But it's really easy to screw up um, if you like move your hand right, the wrong way. There's a lot more emphasis on how close you are to the page than there is with a pen, where right. it's almost static, and it's more about the amount of time your pen is pressed to the page as opposed to right. And if you put like more pressure on the brush, it's like oh, you're you're screwed basically. <laughs> you <laughs> so just blotted out your entire page. Yeah, exactly. Or like you know, you have to like okay, great. I don't have to white that out now. Perfect. Which happens a lot. I, I white out a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, just because I like, I actually like drawing in ink more than I like drawing in pencil. So if I, I so. attempt something that doesn't work out, like a face or something, or I think it looks wrong, I'll just white it out um, until I get it right, basically. Yeah. So you don't do much digital touch-ups on your work. I do. I do do some touch-ups, but not super extensive. I usually just clean things up, and I have changed like a few drawing mistakes. I mean, they wouldn't be mistakes for other people, but it's like stuff I can't stop looking at <laughs> every yeah. time I pick Something up a copy. Something that an artist's attention might immediately draw to, but a casual reader would have no idea. Right, they don't care. Yeah. But I look at them like, oh, God. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's just dumb stuff that all artists have. And, um, you know, it looks fine, but we're just, I don't know, we're just silly people. We're silly, silly people. But even like, uh, so these, these two panels, my face here... That used to be different. I did. I changed those digitally because I didn't like how my face was drawn. Okay. My, my face. Quotation marks. <laughs> the character. So you're coming to TCAP specifically to promote um, Monkey Chef. Uh, I know your adventure uh, book just came out. I read it last night. It was pretty good. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for the most part, just to. I mean, I applied for TCAF one year, didn't get in. I applied for it again for this year, and I got in. I was like, well, I kind of have to go. Yeah. I've never been to Toronto, so, I mean, like, I don't know. I, I mean, I like to come out for these things as much as just to see new places and yeah. see the people that I work with uh, as much as, like, promoting and selling, selling a few comics. Book, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. it's nice to, I mean, I really love interacting with people because I, I sell stuff online and everything, too, but it's not as much fun. Because when you're able to, like, interact with people and, like, give them the rundown of what you do and you know, shake their hand, learn their name, sign something for them, maybe draw something for them. Like that's, I don't know, that's a really special thing that is very specific to a convention like this. Yeah. Especially an indie comic show because there's like a lot of pretense that's just stripped away. Um, Hold on for a second. We're making some closing announcements. 
Just gonna do a dance. Yeah. The tea cap dance. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I knew that was gonna happen. Yeah. They announced it yesterday, but right. I was just like, well, we'll just work with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what was I saying? I was saying, yeah. So it's nice to like be able to come out and actually meet real people that either like 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 you. Like when you told me you you ordered my my second issue and you know we met at Space, I was like, wow, that's amazing. You know. You, that's like I thought you had one of the best works at Space, honestly. I mean, Becca oh, was nice. there, so I'm not going to say the best. Uh-huh. But <laughs> no, that's that's nice. That's, um, that's nice enough. <laughs> it was it was definitely worth something to follow up. Uh, Becca and I go through a lot of comics, um, so is sometimes it's like, oh, you need to go through like this giant pile of things we have this, from this convention. Yeah. And specifically, your comic was one of the ones that I was like, you need to read this comic. Think oh, about all so the rest cool. of the space comics later, but uh-huh. oh, Monkey so Chef much. is Monkey Chef is great. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, hearing stuff like that is really nice. Um, you know, because I, I work in seclusion most of the time, yeah, and I'm just making this thing, which is like very personal or very personal, very hard to make because I went through a lot of like hard times when I was there. Uh, so it's like hard to like retreat all that stuff. And then also make a story about it, and so it's kind of like reliving it, but then you're making it this other thing. <laughs> so it's very, it's very interesting to live in seclusion and like do all that stuff, and then for someone to say, "Oh, I really like that," it's like, oh, thank God. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm doing it for myself, but it's like yeah. I want people to read this stuff and have some sort of reaction. You know, well, or you you walk like a great line in between the funniness of the entire situation of I'm experiencing new things, so obviously I'm going to do things wrong. Yeah, and then there's also like. There are just things about this place that are strange, different, and kind of scary. Yeah, I mean, it's it's completely something I thought I would never do, and just like the unknown, the unknowing of it is was insane. But you're also like, I worked there and I lived there, so I was kind of trapped there. Yeah. Uh, except for one day off each week, so that was like kind of insane. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's like there's there's this quality of like absurdity, but then also like no matter, it seems like no matter where you go you're going to find someone you disagree with and it's going to color your whole perception of it, of where, whatever experience you're in. Yeah. So it's like There's a, a microcosm. moments. Yeah. Right. So it's even if like if you're in New York City or if you're in a tiny farm community in South Africa, there's still going to be like this drama built in <laughs> to your lives. And I think, that's, I think that's just a testament to humanity and how we <laughs> either really don't understand each other or, you know, we... You, you like someone right away because a lot of my my story for for all of monkey chef and especially the third one that's coming out uh at some point <laughs> whenever it's done because it's huge and ridiculous um is that you know there's a lot of people i disagreed with or i just didn't get along with and that when i really do get along with someone or another creature it's like it's like we already understand each other before we've met yeah. And I'm sure you, you've had similar experiences with people, and yeah, most people you're just have. on the same page as some Yeah, people. you just come up to someone, it's like, bam. And a lot of the people I didn't get along with is like, I knew right away I was going to like this person, yeah. which kind of sucks, because then you still try, but then it's still like, oh, I hate being right the and first then, time. Yeah, you feel bad because you were right the first time. Yeah. Catch 22. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of it's about that weird interaction between people, and, you know, them being jerks, and, you know, I was a jerk at some points, and just like... You know, you really painted human yourself. shit. You painted yourself to being more.